Dobber Dan, Saluton, good day, mate, and hello, Gina. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm gonna make Frank and Jack. Frank and Jack because I'm welding it up from a bunch of different scrap materials but what I'm making specifically today is what's called a privet jack so privet is actually an invasive species it's kind of a low growing bush type hedge type plant often called privet hedge as well but it is everywhere in Georgia let me show you just how bad it is along the greenway Here all along the greenway in my town, you can see that privet is just choking this forest. Dominating the understory of the trees. Imagine if that were clear, it would look more like that. Get some cool vistas into the woods instead of being blocked. Privet has a flower that then produces a fruit that the birds eat and they carry it elsewhere. Its roots also travel, so they travel underground and send up shoots. An invasive species doesn't mean it's a bad plant. It just means that it was brought from somewhere else and its natural predators that kept it in check weren't brought along, so that's why it's taking over. There's actually a beautiful little wetland back here that if this privet were just pulled out or trimmed down here in front, you could actually see it. So one of the reasons I'm making this privet jack is to take on projects like this. I've actually proposed to my community that my son and I come out here and pull some of this privet out. So little, little spaces like this along the greenway could be actually enjoyed. All right, enough about privet. Now let's make something to tear it out. So I'm also tackling this project because I really want to practice with my welder. It should be fairly easy welding. Some nice long beads, um, some joints, simple stuff like that. But it will really help me get the practice. A small piece of leaf spring from my dad's recycling pile. I cut down this big slab of half inch steel over at Chad's house. I'll show you what we cut that on in a minute. Got a couple of pieces of three quarter inch pipe and then some scrap pieces here that I'm going to use for some bracing. Not exactly sure how that's going to work just yet, but all right, so let me show you how we cut this bad boy. So I actually need to go pull in the big guns to cut this. So I'm heading over to Chad's house. You've seen Chad on my channel before. His YouTube channel is called Mancrafting and he's got some big guns. I got metal. You got something that can cut this? I think so. This is a Langmire Plasma CNC. And with the HTP micro cut, I can cut five eighths of an inch. So half inch shouldn't be a problem. See what I mean? Big guns. Greg came over to help us with the cut. Thanks for making the file, we appreciate it. You bet, man. Ready to roll? My speed racer goggles, I'm ready to roll. Nice. A little bit of slag on the back, but 
Not bad. It's a little warm. That is beefy. You should run through the uh, yard with that in your hand. Chad's got an affiliate code for this table. If you're looking for a plasma CNC table, I'll put that link in the description below. I mean, who doesn't need something like this? That was awesome. Yeah, that is beefy. I'm trying not to drop it on my toes. Y'all always give me a hard time about wearing my flip-flops or my slides. I love having my feet out in the air, but when it comes to welding, I'm gonna go steel-toed. These two pieces of pipe I had on hand, um, and they're actually slightly different in length. I figure I'm gonna need this dimension, these two pipes together, uh, to have the leverage strength that I want. I don't want it bending, but having it this one about six inches longer is perfect because this end will be my handle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean these up with the grinder and then weld them together. This tool is gonna be functional. It's gonna be brute force. And so I'm not looking for a perfect finish here. I will throw a coat of paint on it, but I'm not looking for gleaming steel. I'm just gonna clean up where I need to weld. Now I'm gonna clean up the leaf spring. Now I'm gonna weld up the pipe. That first bead looks a little cold, so I'm gonna up the voltage a little bit and see what happens. Better, but I want more voltage. Now that is a beefy weld. I'm gonna go back and cover that up. So with this section welded, I'm gonna switch over here and do the top, and then a bead in the middle as well. And I think with those three sections, this ought to hold together pretty well. Good discoloration here, and Chad has told me that that means I'm getting good adhesion. Right, I'm gonna finish the other two welds on this side. So I'm pretty happy with these welds. I don't think this pipe is coming apart. I still need some practice, but I'm actually the most happy with the last section. So I do feel like I've paid more attention here, watched the weld, watched the puddle, and I think it paid off. So I'm really enjoying adding the welding skill to my repertoire. Got a ways to go. I'm not ready for shipbuilding or gas pipelines just yet. Probably never. All right, so I'm gonna clean up this end here and get it ready to weld to the leaf spring. The leaf spring has a little bit of curve to it and I also want to cut off the thread on the pipe. So when I do that, I'm going to try and match the curve of the leaf spring.
close enough, I'm gonna weld it up. The leaf is thicker, so I dialed up my metal thickness and the voltage. Pretty good discoloration through that metal. So that's a good bond. It's also balanced enough that it's standing up on its own. Now it's time to add the teeth. The cut on Chad's Langmeyer was super clean, but there is a little bit of a burr on the lower edge of the plasma cut that I need to clean up real quick with the grinder. The teeth are gonna fit up like this. They'll go on either side of the leaf spring and I'm gonna use the, the long end of the cut, the diagonal part of the cut on the bottom so I can match the angle of the back with the pipe. This will allow me to weld a plate across the back to connect the two teeth. thing is oh, I couldn't get this through airport security that's for sure Would have been nice if I thought about this before we cut this on the Langmeyer, but I'm going to use the grinder to cut the teeth to match the curve of the leaf spring. That'd be my leverage. I know what you're wondering. Is this a privet jack or a zombie apocalypse weapon? The good news is I'm prepared for both. Now that I've got the teeth curved to match the leaf, I'm going to weld beads along the bottom. I love this welder. I'm gonna use this small piece of bar to weld across the back of the pipes connecting the two teeth. And I'm gonna use the hole that's already in it to plug weld to the pipes.
this was some good practice. I'm feeling a lot more confident with this welder and I'm totally stoked to have it. So Chad, thanks for the deal and thanks for teaching me how to use it. There is just one weld left to do. It's alive! So I am stoked about how well this works and it was a blast to make. I hope you enjoyed the cinematic intro. I do that every now and then to uh, spice things up a little bit. Special thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you're interested in getting a little more value out of my content and some extra perks and community, you can check out the link in the description to head on over to Patreon. A quick reminder to tell me how to say hello in your language and I'll add it in my next video. As always, our mission here at Green Choice is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by welding it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Keep all the great comments coming. Please like and share and subscribe for a new Green Shores DIY video almost every Friday.